So I've loaded up ZBrush. I'm just going to close this setting down on the side. Let's close that. And just in case, I'm going to go to Preference and Init ZBrush, just to go right back to the beginning. And I'm going to import my model. So import sub base two, so subdivision two. And I'm going to left click and drag this out and hold shift just to center it. I'm going to press edit to make it editable. And then I'm going to change this material to a matte cap metal. Okay, so before we begin, we need to go to transform and activate symmetry because we're going to mask off exactly where this hair is going to sit on our model. So let's hold control, left click and drag. And let's just paint roughly where we want the hair. So I'm just going to be very rough here and just quickly mask this off. And then I can make some adjustments afterwards. Okay, so control, left click, drag to create our mask. Okay, so that looks okay from the front. Let's just go to our side. We can see that we actually masked off part of the ear. So we're going to hold control and alt, which will deselect. Okay, if you want it to be a higher quality, then just increase the subdivision of your original model. Now that looks okay. And let's look at our poly group. So I'm going to do an auto poly group. If I just turn on the poly fill, if I do a, where are we? Um, yeah, auto groups. We can also do an auto group with the UV as well. Okay, I've just clicked it twice and now we've got it split right through the center. Okay, so this is essentially just changing the colors here. So anything along this UV here will have a poly group. And if you need to make your own, then you could do it with your mask. But for now, it's going to keep this the same. Uh, that's going to create these two as separate polygroups, but we'll get to that later. Um, yeah, that looks okay to me. So the next thing we're going to do is first turn off our polygroup. And we're going to go to fiber mesh and then lightbox fibers. I'm going to double click on this black fiber so we don't want our hair to be that long or all the, all the way down so I'm going to go to modifiers I'm going to turn all of these down to zero I'm going to decrease the coverage which is the uh, thickness of the hair so I'm going to do about 9.8 so max fibers is the amount of fibers within the scene and the coverage is, is the thickness of the hair uh, I'm also going to just remove the length slightly. Okay. And I'm going to change the gravity to minus one. Okay, so now it's going straight up. We can also change the segment to about 20. Okay, so we can see that effect. And now we need to optimize this. I'm going to go to preview settings and I'm going to change this to 100 is fine. I'm going to select fast preview. And then we're going to accept this. Okay, so fiber mesh and accept. So now we've got two different models. If we go to our subtool, we've got our head model and our hair model. If you select the polyfill, you'll notice that it's actually taken those groups from the uh, poly paint and it's applied that to our hair. So all of these are individual strands. So if you hold control and shift and left click, we can just select one of those individual strands. So up here, I'm going to press uh, G on the keyboard to bring up my groom tools. Now all of these are pretty bad actually. They don't really work too well. The only one that really works is the groom hair toss. Okay, so if you use that, I'm just going to increase 
my brush here. I'm also going to go into the settings and make sure that my fiber mesh preserved length is set to 100. If it wasn't, then it would just stretch out our mesh, which we don't want. So here I'm just using this just to try and straighten this and pull this down. Okay. So I'm just selecting all the hair. I'm going to try and just make it completely straight. And you can hold shift as well if you need to smooth this, which will also shorten it. And now I'm just going to pull this down. Okay, so that's groom hair task. Now we can go to our move tool and again set this preserve length to about 100. And now we can get a fine tuning here. So it's a little bit erratic when you use the uh, hair toss grooming tool. But for now, I'm just going to use this move tool and just try and move this into place. So this is quite a lengthy process. You want to take your time with this. Here I'm just quickly pulling each individual strand out and just moving this down. Uh, but again, once you've done that, you're going to want to take your time and actually start to style this hair. So here I'm just holding shift just to smooth this out slightly. And then I'm going to push this down. Now, if you wanted to uh, mask this off with an individual strand, then you can hold control to make a mask. Okay, so let's just do a little bit less. Let's just create this strand here. Okay, and then go down to our poly group again, so poly groups, and then select group masked. Okay, so now this is our group. So you can hold control shift just to mask this off. Okay, so here's all of our masks. If I just want to select, um, where are we? Select outside of the model to bring them all back. But here I just want this individual strand. So I'm just going to use that move tool and just move this down. I might go back to that hair toss just to try and shape this a little bit more. Okay, 
and then back to move. And if you change the length setting, then it will actually stretch this out and make it a little bit longer. Okay, and then you can go back to hair toss and straighten this out. Okay, so just flick between the two. If you need to stretch it out, then use the hair toss. If you need to move it to sculpt this, then you can turn it back on, turn the preserve length back on, and then just start sculpting into it. Okay, so let's do the same for this. Go back to hair toss and then straighten these out. So I did an automatic um, poly paint, but what you could do is you could create your individual poly paints just by using your masks. So you create a mask where you'd want your hair, create a separate poly group of that, and then do it that way. This way I'm just doing an auto poly group just to get something on our model. You know, it's funny because I actually used to have hair like this <laughs> back in my emo days. This was my hair. <laughs> right. So apart from this bit, obviously. Right. So control shift and let's move this one down. Okay, so move it down as much as you can and then go back to that move tool and then just make some finer adjustments.
Okay, so it looks like it's created polygroups at the back, which ideally I didn't want, but let's just stretch these out anyway. And it looks crazy with all of the polygroups. If I just turn this off, we can see the actual hair texture. So you'll basically just want to keep working into this until it's not so fuzzy. Okay, and you can start sculpting into this just a little bit more. Okay, I think we'll leave it at that. Um, again, if you go into the polygroups, if you need to split this off into individual strands, then just create a mask of it and then create a separate polygroup. And then you can start to sculpt into this a little bit more. If you wanted to add kind of different curls, then you could do that with the move tool. Okay, so just sculpt into it. And then when you're happy with it, we can export this out. Okay, so let's go down to our fiber mesh and let's just make sure the fast preview is selected. And we're just going to export this hair out. So I'm going to go up to our subtool and I'm going to turn off our head sculpts because we've already got that in Maya. And I'm just going to export this hair. So let's go to export, make sure the hair is selected, and then let's do a new folder new hair call this long hair fiber and we're also going to go into the preview settings again and drop this way down so we haven't got as many fibers so back to fiber mesh and on the preview Let's try something like two and press enter. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we're going to use this as our fiber mesh within Maya. Okay, so let's export that out. So let's go to export curves. Select export curves. If it comes up with a little error and that, that it says that it's far too big, then you might need to drop this down even more. I set this to two. Uh, even two can be quite dense depending on how much fiber you've got within the scene. Uh, so you might want to drop it down to one, but experiment. Ideally, you don't want to drop it down too much where you actually start to lose a lot of the detail or the structure in the hair. So here I'm going to turn this into a Maya file, so MA. And then let's change this to uh, long hair curve. Okay, and save that out. So now we're going to go into Maya and we're going to import all of this together. So 
Okay, so in Maya, I'm going to import one of my uh, models. Let's go back into what have we got? Head sculpt. Um, let's go. Let's try and find my actual file. Let's just press cancel. I believe I've got it in this folder. So we've got Maya texture. I believe that would be the one. Let's drag and drop this in. And then let's turn our texture on. Okay, that seems to be working. And now let's add our hair. So let's go to import. So file, import, and then let's go to our new hair folder. New hair, and then let's import our fiber mesh. Okay, so it might take a while. Okay, there we go. So we're going to need to fill in the gaps, and that's where we're going to use our curve. For now, I'm just going to select these fibers. And let's just drag this all the way down. Shift click the last one, and then press Control G just to group this. And I'm going to change the texture. So I'm going to go into my hypershade. And here I'm going to type in hair. I'm going to use Arnold, so I'm going to use the AI standard hair. I'm just going to hold middle mouse and drag this into the scene. So now we've got our AI hair, making sure that this is still selected. So select our group and then right click on the hair material and then select assign material to selection. Okay, so now it is textured. Okay, so now go to our file and import. In fact, before we do that, let's just have a look at this render. So let's just press play here. Okay, so we can see those results. We can see there's a little bit of bolding here. We might actually need to go back into the uh, ZBrush model, make those adjustments and re-import it. For now, just for this demonstration, I'm going to keep it the way it is. Okay, so we can see that the hair is actually gray. So we need to select our model again. So our group one. In fact, let's just select an individual strand and go back to that AI hair. We just need to change some of these settings. So let's go to our tint. In the specular tint, we can just drop this down. Okay, and you can change the color if you want to. Let's do more of a brown color. Okay, that looks okay. So let's just close that down and now let's import our hair. So let's go to file and import and then import that Maya long hair curve. And now we've created the curves on our scene. So here we've got our long hair curve and we're gonna use this as our set model. So we're gonna select a, um, a cube here and we're gonna make our hair selection on the cube and then use those settings for our individual hair strands. So make sure you're not on modeling, go to FX, go to N hair and then create hair, but select the settings. Now in create hair options, make sure you have the output set to paint effects. Make sure these are off and grid is selected. The U and V count, will just be set to one. The hair per clumps will be set to two. You can increase this more if you want to. You can experiment with those numbers. Make sure it's on dynamic. Points per hair is 10 and the length is five. Also make sure that the place hairs into 
is set to new hair system. So when you're done with that, you can press apply. Now it's applied our hair to the cube. We can now use this as our setting. So let's go back to the um, long hair curve, then select end hair, assign hair system, and now we've got this hair system shape one. Okay, so I can select that, it might take a while, but you can see it's now created individual curves for our hair. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's just go back to that render just so we can see these settings and press play. So we can see that the default hair is set to blonde. We're going to need to change that back to our hair color that we've used for the fiber mesh. So here I'm going to select the um, hair system one. I'm going to change some of these settings. So here on the hair shape or hair system shape one, we're going to go to clumps and hair shape. I'm going to increase the amount of hair that's within the scene. So here, this clump width, I could increase this. Okay, that's going to create even more hair strands. If I want to create even more, then I could set this to something like, let's say 50. Okay, so we've created a lot more hair within the scene. Uh, we can also increase the thinning. Okay, if it's looking a little bit too thick. And you can bend and you can uh, twist the clumps as well. So all the individual clumps of hair, you can twist them. Yeah, so you can make these little adjustments. And that has actually filled in that gap pretty well. So that's pretty good. Here we can also change the width scale. If, for example, your hair is just um, pointing upwards, then you could move this down and then this one up. And then the hair will fall down more. See, so as you can see here within ZBrush, I needed to uh, pay a little bit more attention as to where I was sculpting this. It's um, kind of all over the place, but again, for this demonstration, I'll keep this the way it is. And then let's go down to our shading. And then let's change the shade. So let's just make this a little bit darker. Okay, so I'm just letting that load, but we can see that we get pretty good results with the AI hair shader. Again, we might need to just go back into ZBrush and just change some of the um, the fiber mesh. We need to move this so that we don't have any bold patches, but we can easily remove this within Photoshop. So that's how we can create the hair. Let's have a look at the beard. Now it's the same process but we're going to go back into ZBrush and let's add this beard. Right, now that we're back into ZBrush, I'm just going to remove this hair and turn the head sculpt back on. I'm going to hold control, left click and drag away from the model just to deselect the mask. And now let's just select part of the beard. Now I'm going to split this off into separate sections, so I'm going to hold control, left click and drag and just create the first section of the moustache. Okay, something like that. Little handlebar moustache. And then we're going to create our fiber mesh again, so fiber mesh. And then let's preview this. And in this case, we want to try and get it uh, right within fiber mesh. Okay, so we're not going to sculpt this as much. So let's go to our modifiers again. And this time, let's set the gravity to 1. That's a very long moustache. So let's just change the length and bring this up a bit. Okay, that looks quite good. Um, the coverage, 
we'll keep that at about 9.8 and maybe just decrease the max fibers a little as well so in this case I'm just bringing those segments down because that was the setting for the uh, for the hair so this looks okay maybe let's just increase the length just a little bit okay so I want it to go over the top lip bring it down yeah I think that looks quite good so let's keep it like that we can always change this later so let's go to our preview settings again so fast preview and then accept this so now we've got our moustache we can always just go back into the model and uh, make those adjustments so we can go to the move tool again and then just start to move this around yeah so you might want the top lip to come out just a little bit more Okay, brilliant. So when you're happy with that, uh, you can either just export that out or you can do the same thing again. So let's go and export this model. So just the mustache model. So let's export this. And I'll export this as mustache, fiber. Okay, so that's the OBJ. We can then go down to our fiber mesh and let's set this to something like one. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then let's export these curves. So export curves, we'll set this to Maya again, and this time we'll set this to mustache underscore curves. Okay, and then it's just the same process. So we can go to file. This is going to look really strange with emo hair and a big handlebar mustache, but hey ho, let's do this. So import, and we'll import the mustache fiber. Okay, good, good. And for now, let's just uh, select our mustache. So where are we? Mustache. That's looking good. Let's just right click this, go to assign existing material, and then let's assign the, uh, where are we? AI standard hair one, just so we've got the exact same material. Okay, and then let's go to file, import, and then import our curves. Okay, so we've got our curve mustache. And let's just do the same thing. Let's go to N hair, assign, hair system and then assign the same hair that we're using for the other one. So in this case there's a little bit too much going on so we might need to assign a new hair material so let's go down let's create another box okay so another cube and then n hair create hair we've got all of the same settings uh, let's maybe just change this back to two and then apply that. Okay, and then go to our curve mustache again, make sure that is selected. Then go to N hair, assign new hair material, and is it there? It doesn't seem to have created it. Let's just delete this just to make sure. Um, let's just do another one so I'm going to create a new box make sure it is selected N hair create hair um, paint effects new hair system yeah otherwise it's just going to copy that so new hair system and then apply there we go now we can create our new hair system for the mustache so select the curve go to n hair assign new hair and then now we've got our shape 2 okay there we go our shape 2 then select the hair system 2 and now let's just have a look at our render view 
Yeah, so this is already looking pretty good. Um, if you wanted gray hair in between, then you might not actually need to change too many settings here. Let's just have a look at this. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's such a weird combination, but you get the idea. Um, we could always make this hair a bit shorter, or to be honest, we could just to totally remove this hair. I quite like in bold. Um, if you wanted to do that, you can just go ahead and select the hair and delete it. Uh, for now, now, I'll keep it here just so we can see that effect. So let's zoom in. Okay, so back to our hair system shape. We're going to go all the way back up to our hair clumps. So you can increase this again if you want to uh, increase the clump width. And then if you want to increase the amount of um, hair clumps there are, so let's say 10. Yeah, it might be just a little bit too much. Let's do about six. Okay, and then we can go all the way down to our shading. And let's just set this to something like a dark gray. Yes, yeah, so that looks pretty good. You can also just not import the um, the fiber mesh and just use the curves. It just means that you're going to need to increase the amount of uh, fibers that you use. So let's just do the same for uh, the sides here and for the chin. Uh, this time I'm not going to import the fiber mesh. I'm just going to import the curve and we can see that effect. So let's just stop this and get back into ZBrush. So let's go on to Subtool and let's just keep this on just so we can see where the hair is. I'm going to remove my mask. I'm then going to hold Control, left click and drag where I want my beard. And usually I'd split this off into two different sections. So the chin would be a different section and then the cheeks would be another section. But for now, I'm just going to keep this as one whole part. So that will be okay there. Okay, we'll keep it like that. I'm then going to hide that beard, go down to our fiber mesh and then press preview. Okay, so I'm going to go to modifiers and just decrease the length here. And then decrease the coverage. Okay, so when you're happy with that, make sure Fast Preview is on, which means I'm going to need to go back into here and just change the length, just make it a little bit shorter. Okay, and then press Accept. And now I'm going to go back into that Move tool and just move this around slightly. And I'm just holding shift just to um, smooth this out slightly. I'm just going to undo all of this and just go the other way instead.
Okay, so we'll leave it at that. I've just held shift just to make them a little bit smaller. Uh, I'm then going to go back down to fiber mesh. And uh, where are we? Let's go back to preview settings and change this to something like two. Press enter. Um, that might not be enough. Let's just set this to about three, maybe. Okay, just in case, I'm going to go for four and then go to export curves. In fact, I'll need to push this. Let's just try six. I think that might be a little bit better. Export curves. Now, if it doesn't come up with the little option that says, hey, there's too much here, then you might want to go back to preview and just bump this up a little bit and see how much you can actually get away with. So eight is actually okay. So ah, here we go. So it's saying, oh, do you want to do it? So now let's go back to preview. Let's try six again. And now export curves. There we go, no error. And then we're going to select the MA and I'm going to select um, beard underscore curve. Okay. Now back to, <laughs> oh God, what have we done? I feel like I might just want to delete this hair, to be honest. Um, let's just delete all of this. In fact, we might just have problems if I start deleting everything. So let's just keep it the way it is. Uh, right. So I think I've gone too far back. Redo. So let's import the beard. So file, import, import beard. So it's just imported the curves and we've got the beard selected here. So we're going to need to create a new cube again. So we've got our new cube. We're going to go to N hair, create hair. And again, making sure this is selected as a new hair system. We could increase the clumps. Uh, I'm going to do about three here and then click apply. So now we need to go back to our beard. There you go, beard curves. And we'll go to N hair, assign new hair, and shape three. Okay, so give that some time to load. There's quite a lot of hair follicles there, so it might take a while. But it has done it. There we go. Right. So let's select our hair system three and straight off, I'm going to set this to about 20 and I'm going to increase the hair width. And then I'm going to go to Arnold and Opal, open the Arnold render view. Just let that render. Okay. So you can see that the hair is pointing upwards. Uh, ideally, I want this to fall down a little bit. So let's go to the clump width scale and Let's just bring this one down and then this one all the way up. Okay, just to flip that around. Okay, so now it's pointing down a little bit more. Let's just change per clumps. Let's set this to about 16. And we can also uh, decrease the clump width. Yeah, so you can see why I, I usually mask this off. I usually do the side of the cheeks and then I'll I'll do the um, uh, the chin. Yeah, just so I can kind of fine tune this. Ideally, I wouldn't have this bit as long, uh, but you can see that effect. Okay, and then I can go down here. I can select my hair color. Let's just make this dark again.
So I'm just going to go back into that hair system two and go onto the color. Um, is that the right one? Hair system two. And let's just change the color. Um, was it that one? There we go. Let's drop this down. Okay, so I'll let that render, but that is it for this tutorial. So there's two different ways you can do this. You can either export out the fiber mesh so that you've got a, a main base that you can work with within Maya. So for the mustache, we exported the fiber mesh and then imported the curve so that we can have uh, a subtle change where we can add maybe some um, fly hairs coming out of the mustache or for the hair. And we've also added the... AI hair material and we can see that we've got two different materials here one with the curve and then one with the um, fiber mesh and it looks kind of convincing actually as long as you bump up these settings so you'd need to go back into Arnold and here I've got this set to EXR let's set this to JPEG and my preset set to 540 so let's set this to HD 1080 you can also go to the Arnold render and increase all of these by double the amount. And it's going to take a really long time to render, but you will get a really nice render at the end. Okay, so I'm just going to let this render and then skip right to the end. Okay, so it rendered out and then the whole computer crashed, uh, which hasn't actually happened to me so far. But of course it has to happen when you're recording a video. So uh, I didn't save that. So I'm going back to my original model here. You can see I've also modeled a crown within um, 3D Coat. And then I've imported those textures. And make sure when you're importing the textures from 3D Coat, you export it as something like an Unreal preset, just so we've got the metal material. So if I go into the Hypershade here, and let that load you need to make sure that you create a new AI standard surface so don't just import it in um, and then use that material because it won't be an Arnold material so create a new one when we let's go back onto our crown where are we crown AI here we go so what I've basically done is I've just hooked all of these up to its corresponding section. So here we've got the opacity set to the specular color to out color. I have the base color, so out color to base color. The metalness, I've changed this setting to raw and also set it to alpha is luminance. And then select the alpha to the metal. Okay, so now we've got the metal material. Now the bump, you're not going to actually see the bump. We need to go into the settings here, but I'll show you that shortly. The emissive color goes straight into the emissive color. Okay. Now as for the bump, which would be our normal map that exports out, I'm just going to close this down. So we can see we've actually got the bump here. If you select our material and then let's go to, let's make sure we actually have the crown selected. I'm going to go to our crown AI, so it's our AI standard surface material. Go all the way down here to geometry, 
and then bump okay and then load your normal map and make sure you set this to UV tiling mode UV base ZBrush and then generate a preview make sure the color space is set to raw and that's it you should be good to go so that's how we can render out this material so I'm just going to zoom in here you can now see that we've got our hair material and I've also just rendered out the hair curve I didn't actually use the fiber mesh for this section here okay so it looks quite realistic I've added some more lights on the side I've added a mesh light just to add some kind of bounce light here and uh, this was very quick so spend more detail on this I just wanted to create a quick concept but you can create this in 3d coat and uh, use something like a retopology via decimation and then just import it all together and do your render so the last thing to do is to just put this into Photoshop and you can paint little sections out we can see here from the original texture um, or actually it was from the displacement map um, was a little bit too high on the nose so we can just remove that you can see that some of the uh, beard fibers actually went onto the lips so again you can go into Photoshop and use the spot healing brush tool just to remove that and then yeah if you want to add any of the details some scars uh, it will be the same process for the um, eyelashes and um, the eyebrows so you can just use fiber mesh and then sculpt it in that way uh, for now I've just left it and I've just applied an image to the final result uh, in fact let's just have a look at that let's go back into head sculpt and look at the final render okay so I just added an image for the eyebrows and I've kind of painted into it a little bit I've added some scars um, again removed that section on the lips where it was covering the lips I've also brightened up some of the hair here which is um, easier to do when you're using two different versions so the fiber mesh that's a bit darker and then the curves which is a little bit lighter so you can get these highlights but for now I've just used a curve just to make them a little bit brighter within Photoshop so in this case it's just a concept this isn't going to be game ready it could be game ready but for now I'm just painting into this as a concept okay so I hope that helped in your journey in creating a head sculpt and adding hair and uh, yeah if you follow along with this then send me your results and I look forward to seeing it um, in fact just before I end I also added some eyes so I just added a basic sphere I UV'd it and then just applied this image and put them there otherwise they were just totally blank which looked a little bit zombified if that's the effect you're going for then that's fantastic okay I'll leave you there and again, I look forward to seeing your work. Take care. Goodbye.